What's up guys? My name's Jillian, this is Matt, and we are here to guide you through what to wear and how to layer when you go skiing or snowboarding. Knowing what to wear when you go skiing or snowboarding can be the difference between an all-time day that you reminisce on for years or a day where you spend the entire drive home just trying to warm up. Like Jillian said, when you're up against Mother Nature and harsh mountain elements, it can be a fine line between being underdressed and cold or overdressed and overheating. So let's walk through what to wear when you go skiing or snowboarding, from base layers and long underwear to mid layers, outerwear, and accessories. First up, we've got our base layers or long underwear. This really just refers to the clothing that is in direct contact with your skin and serves as the foundation for your layering. These layers are super important because they play a key role in managing perspiration. Most base layers are made out of synthetic materials like nylon and polyester, or natural fibers like merino wool, or even a blend of the two. The reason for this is these materials are great at wicking sweat. When you're in the mountains, hot and sweaty can turn to cold and wet in a matter of minutes. We recommend avoiding anything with cotton as it holds moisture and doesn't provide warmth after it gets wet. After you've got your base layers on, you'll typically want some sort of mid-layer. And when we say mid-layer, we're really just referring to some sort of insulating quarter zip, full zip, hoodie, flannel, or vest. This could be a down or synthetic puffy, a fleece pullover, a wool sweater, or just a flannel or hoodie made from technical fabrics. Avoid cotton. The key with mid-layers is really just to find something that's the right warmth level for your local weather and your anticipated level of exertion. When it comes to outerwear, there are shell jackets and pants and there are insulated jackets and pants. Choosing between the two is really just a matter of personal preference. Shells for those that run hot or want more control over their temperature throughout the day, or insulated if you run cold or just want the simplicity of managing fewer layers. The other major factors to consider with ski and snowboard jackets and pants are waterproofing, breathability, and fit. Waterproofing and breathability ratings are usually offered from about 5K all the way upwards of 20K. The waterproof rating and breathability rating are separate, but are typically expressed together, usually something like 10K, 10K, or 20K, 15K. The higher the value, the more waterproof and more breathable that product will be. For more detailed explanation of these numbers, Check out our waterproof and breathability guide on evo.com. When it comes to fit, it's again more a matter of personal preference. Some people like longer jackets or baggier pants, while others like more form-fitting gear. There are also bibs and pants with built-in suspenders. It's worth noting that ski and snowboard pants ought to be longer than regular pants. Between covering your boots to keep the snow out and accommodating bent knees, the extra length goes a long ways. Bibs are really popular right now because they're comfortable, stylish, and they're better at keeping snow out. When shopping for bibs, look for a drop seat or side entry zips. These are a game changer for bathroom breaks on the mountain. Last but certainly not least, you'll need some accessories to complete your on-hill attire. Although optional, I've come to really appreciate having a neck tube or balaclava that I can pull up over my cheeks and nose to shield from windburn and provide a little extra warmth. Here at EVO, we always recommend wearing a helmet, especially now that helmets have come so far in terms of fit, warmth, comfort, and style. If you don't have a helmet, you'll at least want a hat to keep your head and ears warm. Again, try to avoid hats that are made of cotton. After the hat or helmet, you'll need some snow goggles to protect your eyes from the snow, wind, and sun. Although most goggles nowadays are helmet compatible, it never hurts to double check. And then finally, some good snow gloves or mittens. I personally am more of a mitten guy because my hands always get cold in regular gloves. But I know a lot of people are fans of the added dexterity you get with gloves. If you're particularly sensitive to cold, it never hurts to pack along some hand or toe warmers that you can always slide into your gloves or boots if needed. All right, so now you know what to wear when you go skiing or snowboarding. If you need to pick up any items or have more specific questions, our experts love talking about gear. Visit us online, in store, or give us a call. We're always happy to help and want to make sure you get the most out of your trip to the mountains. 
subscribe to our channel, and drop any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the hill.